All right, y'all, what's up? DJ Drogs here, and today we have a video about the Gemini MDJ-1000. Um, you may have seen my previous video of me updating my two MDJ-1000 players. The Gemini company has come out with another uh, software update. There are several things they're aiming to fix in this update. The main points are they're fixing many of the issues with the loops, how you couldn't get out of them, into them easily. Um, how they weren't starting correctly, that sort of thing. So basically a lot of the, the loops function, they focus to fix. In addition to that, they've also tried to fix the scroll function. So if you've used these units before, you know that sometimes they get hung up on when you're uh, scrolling to select a track, and it sometimes takes a while to process and go through files. Not because you're being slow, but because the unit itself is having trouble. Finally, the, it's aiming to update the networking, so players connecting together and working as a team. Um, you may have had issues with them uh, recognizing that they're supposed to link up before. I've had that personally uh, as an issue myself. And also there's a one new feature where you can half or double the BPM of a track uh, on the unit. That's new, kind of minor, but it's new also. So let's get right into it. All right, y'all, so the first thing you gotta do to update these units is you got to download the updating software from Gemini's website. So we'll go to that right now. Just pull up your web browser and go to Gemini. Um, and it'll be Gemini Sounds, Sound, and um, load up there. And what you're gonna to go to is you're gonna to go to DJ Media Controllers in DJ 1000. Now that you're on the MDJ1000 page, you're going to go to Firmware Update, and you will download the firmware update based on what platform you have, PC or Mac. So you'll download it and go through the installation steps on your computer. I've already downloaded it though. All right y'all, so the next thing you're going to do once it has finished downloading is you're going to open up the software here. Now this is what the screen will look like. You'll have Gemini Updater, Gemini Updater version nine for the 6.2 update. Now that you have this open, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we are going to uh, take the USB cable hooked into the unit. Um, if you do not already have it hooked in, you need to go ahead and plug it in. But we're going to take the USB, which should be already plugged into the back of the unit. Let's check though. Yeah, you can see it is right there. It's um, this right here. That is the plug-in. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go over here with your USB cable and just plug it into a USB port of the right side on your computer. So once you have that plugged in, what you're going to do is you're going to go back to your unit and you're simply just going to power it on from the back and uh, you can see there it's booting up. It will take a second or two to boot up, about 20 seconds. And you'll see 6.1 is the current version we have on it. All right, now that it's booted up, what we're going to do is we're going to go to MIDI and we're going to push MIDI mode. So right there will be the third button down from the top. MIDI. And uh, it will start looking around and stuff, thinking thinking there's like a DJ software open. Now we go back over here. All right, y'all, so what you'll do then, is I was having a bit of an issue, I got called away because I had to do something, you gotta listen to your parents. But what you'll do then, is once you've connected it, turned it on, and put it in mini mode, you'll hit connect. And it'll say, this button right here, and it'll say, all right, if you, it's connected, you'll hit OK. And then a transfer will begin. But before that completely goes through, you're going to see a screen here that confirms the versions. So say your current version. Here, let me put you all on the tripod here. It says your current version is 6.1. 
the latest version is 6.2. Would you like to update to the latest version? And of course, we want to update to the latest version. So we'll just hit yes. Okay, also, one important note is um, we have to do after it's downloaded the new version is you have to hit update device now you know the update will start to progress when it says transfer in progress so um, let's recap here so once you've plugged it in to your computer and turned it on hit on the mini vote mode you'll hit connect it'll connect um, then the download for the actual update file will go on to the, the updater the updater software then you have to hit update device and then the transfer will begin and then the update will go through. So now I will put it in time last minute. Alright y'all, so now we're back here and now that we have uh, done this step here it'll say transfer complete update finished and if it updates successfully you'll get this message here it'll say update installed correctly please close program and disconnect slash power off your controller I'm not sure why it says that it should probably say player but when reconnected slash powered on your device will have the latest software so what this basically means is hit okay we X out of the Gemini, Gemini, Gemini updater software, and we just swing over here. And all we gotta do is simply power off the unit, then swing back over here, unplug the unit, and if all went according to plan, when we turn the unit back on here. It should say version 2, which it does. It says version 2, which means that we have successfully updated this player. All right, awesome. All right, y'all, that is all there is to it to update this player. So let's recap. Um, it's planning to fix the loops. It's planning to fix the scroll function, which was really laggy before and it's planning to fix the networking and add a doubling and half of a BPM, of the BPM. All right, so some other things I'm also looking for in this update is I am looking to see if it's helped with stability. The main problem with this unit I found is the stability. That's my biggest issue. Um, I found the stability and the crashes are caused by, in my cases, they're mostly caused by when you're trying to scroll really fast through tracks. I've seen that um, it kind of overloads it per se and it makes it crash. It's especially bad on this one, um, so we'll see if it fixed it. The other thing is is when one of the units go down, the other goes down because it's a link. Um, so I want to see if the networking helps with the stability of uh, the units communicating so that they both don't crash. I don't know, you know, the coding and the exact issues why they crash all the time, but that's my observations of cause and effect and how actions that we do as DJs on these units just normally affects uh, their chance of crashing. So now I'm going to play around with them with a couple minutes, see how they're working, and I'll get back to y'all. I'm not going to include any clips of me DJing on them just because of copyright. But I'll get back to y'all. See you then. Alright y'all, I've been messing with these for a while now since I've updated them. And um, there's definitely some things I'm really happy about that they've definitely fixed making uh, it a better product, making it more stable. Uh, let's talk about those first actually. So first of all, the scroll function, which where it sometimes really got jammed up and immediately made the unit crash, is working a lot better. I only had it stick a couple times and what I mean by stick is it only got stuck and didn't scroll down I think once or twice uh, which is a lot better um, 
especially because before anytime I was doing a really fast transition and I had to get to another song really fast and even if I knew exactly where it was you know um, I couldn't go fast because it would get stuck and it was just taking longer but anyway that's besides the point now because it's fixed for the most part and even the sticks I did have were really short um, not more than three four seconds which is pretty good also the time it took to process the song and load it onto the player it was slower so I mean faster, sorry, not slower. So from the time you took to select the song and push the enter button to the time it loaded up so you can play it, that's a lot shorter. Now there's still the issue with the album if information and artwork not coming up as soon as it should. Another thing that I wish they would do as well is I wish that they would um, make it so that the screen would stay up there longer when you're selecting the songs so you can look at the info. So those two things, if that makes sense. So first off, making it so you can really see the actual uh, song information, like album, artist, that sort of thing, because it doesn't come up correctly most of the time. And sometimes, the and well, majority of the time, the artwork doesn't come up either, which is frustrating. But I wish they would do that, and so you can see it longer, but I also made it, I wish they made it so that there's some, I know that they're, they've already shipped these out, but maybe making it some way that you can map it or something so that you have different screens from just um, that one search screen. So maybe like a cover flow, that sort of thing. Um, pre shorting genres off iTunes, seeking with, seeking, seek, syncing with iTunes, that sort of thing. I know it sounds weird, but yeah. Also on the networking, it seems to be working perfectly now. I unplug it, plug it back in, that sort of thing. Uh, several times, it didn't have any issues. So that's really, really good. Which means that, let's say, if this unit goes down, even though this is the one with the USB, both of them will not go down. I was having that issue, which is weird. Anyway, that's fixed. Cool. Now onto the loops, which several of you have asked about. The loops are working much better. Um, they're a lot tighter and they're a lot uh, easier to work with. Although, the exit loop is still not working very well. Um, it's very finicky to work with and what I mean by this is that when I push that button, it doesn't always exit the loop. Um, it'll sometimes go to the uh, slip loops, stuff like that, that I don't understand why it's doing that. It's still bugging out. This is especially happening when you have it in a really small loop, so half beat, quarter beat, sixteenth beat, um, that sort of thing. I know not all people go that far, but it was still happening to me. While mostly in those ranges, it was also happening to me when I was at two, four beats. And it also was glitching so that it was kind of messing up the song a little bit. Now, I am happy to say, though, that the uh, adjustment of the loops and the length of the loops using the jaw wheel, so in and out, uh, hitting those with shift and then using the joggle to adjust the size of the loop. Those are working 100% better. I'm very happy with that. The performance of the auto loops and the slip loops uh, you use here are also improved. Um, but once again, the re-loop and exit is still all gummed up. So you need to fix that. Um, I hope this review helps you. If you have any more questions, comment down below. If you like this video, like it for me and subscribe. Also, go ahead and hit that bell so you get notifications when I upload uh, because how YouTube works and all that stuff, you don't get it on your main page so you can't always see when I upload. So if you want to see all my content, hit the bell. Awesome. Until next time, guys, like and subscribe. Practice is Roy, DJ Drogs, over and out.